Okay, we're going to do some upgrades here. We had uh, a little slop in the, the timing. What was happening was that on this part here, when I was running that running that end mill in here, the end mill, even though I had a, a chamfer on the corner so they weren't sharp, I was getting a little line on one side. Now I was able to buff it out before the inspector got a hold of it. And I suspected what it was and I didn't think it was going to be that big an issue but apparently it is so what's going on here is remember I I got this to where I can rotate it set that timing mark but what's happening is that when you when you rotate the unit the belt, when the motor locks up and you start rotating it to get that timing mark, this pulley's, pulley's moving too. See how much that moves? So what I've been doing was, you know, this, when you're, when you're timing it, what you really need is some way to hold this pulley. Once it locks up, you need to be able to hold it so when you're moving this, it's not putting a little drag on that pulley and moving it like that. And what I've been doing is I've been setting it then I rotate it 360 to make sure it's there and sometimes you know it doesn't go back because this this pulley has moved and it throws it off a couple thou so I thought about what I could do I mean maybe to some people it's not a big issue but you know, I don't have to have parts that are deviated. Don't want that. So the idea is to is to lock this pulley. So I thought the easiest thing to do is to put a clamp on it. So I made this bracket on the bottom. But I didn't want the clamp to be there all the time because you know most of the time if you're just doing general work you don't need it so so at first I made this uh, it looks like this this is the, the base And what I do is I I put a dowel pin in it, press the dowel pin in. Now the, the original one, I have it undercut here so that this back half and this back half will touch. And this material in the middle is undercut, so it so it'll clamp. So the when the back half is on the front half, it'll clamp, clamp down. I made a little boo boo here, 
because I had the program coming in to do this, but I had a bolt here, and it was going to hit my bolt, so I had to stop it. So I just manually did this. Just took that down 10 thou on each side. 10 at the most, all you need is like 5, really. But it doesn't matter, put a little extra on there. And then this thing on the bottom was going to clamp onto this pulley. It was going to press against that pulley and clamp it this way. This being a, a pivot point, or a stationary pivot point. So that looked like it was going to work pretty good, but the problem was that this Delrin clamping on this plastic, I mean it would hold it, but it, it just it just wasn't right. You know I needed something a little more well I won't say rigid but just something a little more where I had a little more confidence in it. So Remembering these rubber pieces I made, I went ahead and made a new set of aluminum and uh, the slot in here, that's just, just to make it lighter. I mean, it, it didn't have to be there, but I don't know, I just wanted to put it in there. So anyway, I, I incorporated two, two of those holes for the rubber mounts, and this hole here is what I used to tighten it to make it clamp. Now here's, here's the rubber pieces. And I did the same thing as before, I cut two sides. So I'm going to put them in there. Anyway, how this is going to work is that these pieces are slip fit on this dowel pin. So that's going to go on that side. This one's going to go on this side. Of course, I'm going to have those rubber pieces in there. And those bolt. It's going to go in here. Just a 1032. make sure this thing is right before I put those rubber pieces in because basically once you put them in you, you're going to destroy them taking them out but I mean that looks pretty good I 
know, there's not a not a lot of gap there, and that uh, rubber piece, when you put it in, is going to take up about uh, forty thousandths on each side. So that should work out really good. So what that's going to do is I had to put a cutout on my my pulley, my uh, hub. See the cutout here? I had to drop that in about an eighth of an inch. So what I did was I I made it so that when the the split mark was straight up, the cutout would be 90 degrees so that I could put this in. Because I want the uh, this radius here is going to ride on that belt, going to touch that belt, and that's what controls the the depth of it. Is that radius, same radius as that belt, going to ride on there? When you push that in. And the two uh, two holes here are going to align with the middle of that pulley. And since that went in three sixteenths, almost two hundred thousandths, I had to put a cut. I had to cut this down. Because this is too tall here, so I had to cut it, give it room to go in there. I see when I rotate it, you see it won't go in. When I rotate it off of that cutout, it won't go in because it's not deep enough on that back leg. See the gap I got there? So rather than put it all the way around, I didn't want to really do that. So I made it so that the, uh, like I said, the uh, split mark is straight up. And I know that this will lock in there. And then I'll lock it up manually, and that'll keep that pulley stationary. Then I can go ahead and rotate it, get my timing mark just right. And I know that that pulley won't rotate. So that should get me a lot closer to what I was trying to do. And that's a big improvement. And another thing I did was that these uh, these lines, they were coming out of this manifold and they're just going into this uh, fitting up here and they were basically just hanging around going anywhere they wanted to. So what I did was I made these little pieces and what that's gonna do is this hole on the end is going to capture the air line and this flat is going to fit on the top of here then a bolt goes through it actually goes in this back one but this flat fits on top of there and this is just a hole to capture the, the air line now put this one in So you can see what it looks like. 
Well, it just kind of, you know, cleans it up a little bit. That way the, the airline is, you know it's not going to move. It's going to stay there. So I'm going to put, leave that one there and then put one on the other side. Because this airline, when it was installed, it was just hanging out. And it just, it just didn't look right, you know, just being out away from kind of floating around wherever it wanted to go. So uh, we would tidy that up a little bit. And uh, that's about all I did. But, you know, we don't, uh, we want to make sure we make good quality parts. So, and usually when I'm, when I'm running the job, I'm running in one direction all the time. And if I have to back it up, I make sure I back it up and then I move it forward to go in the same direction I was moving. I would, I would reverse to do something, but make sure I go forward again. So, all right, just uh, want to give you an update. And uh, I guess we'll talk with you later.